Hey folks, good guy Glenn here. You know what I haven't done in a long time? A video that makes a lot of you angry. So here we go, we're gonna do that today. I'm not trying to make anyone angry. So that's just, I'll preface by saying that. I never go out and try to intentionally piss off anybody. But the fact of the matter is, the world we live in today, you want to hear your way. And if it deviates from what you think is the truth at all, you're mad about it. It's just the world we live in. Everybody's mad. Everybody's mad online. Everybody's looking to be mad everywhere. Everywhere you go, people are just always mad. You ever notice that? It's because we live in a very selfish world right now. Very selfish. It's just the way it is. It's hurrah for me, the hell with you, like my father used to always say. Funny thing is, he was always saying it about me. Maybe he was right. What I mean by that is, I constantly see you all, and you're always complaining online about this job, about OTR. It harkens back to the video I did of why are you doing OTR? If you hate it so bad, if you hate everything about this life, then why are you doing it? I'm doing it for my experience, Glenn, so I could go out and get my local job. You know your local jobs could be worse than OTR, right? Like, y'all don't know that? Have you talked to any local drivers? First of all, majority of local jobs, hand, hands-on freight. You're going to be unloading the trailer yourself at Dollar General at Walgreens, if you're driving for Pepsi or Coca-Cola, at all the grocery stores on your stops, at, you know, depending on what kind of groceries you deliver to a grocery store, you might be unloading the trailer or they might have an unloader unloading for you, but a lot of that freight you're unloading. That's a lot more work. Second of all, the trucks in that industry start running at 0, 3 in the morning and you cut out at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay? It's a lot of hours. You're still working a 70-hour work week, but you know what you haven't included in? You haven't included in your commute back and forth to the yard. 45 minutes will give you a good will give you a good commute. 45 minutes to and from the yard. That's what an hour and for, that's like an hour and a half, right? That's an hour and a half you're losing out of your home time. Now you go home. You're working a 70-hour week, right? You have less time at home. You're going to have to eat and go right to bed and then be up 2 o'clock in the morning to be back in the truck at 0, 3. That's less time than you have when you do your 10-hour after you're done driving every single day. Just saying. And how many of us are really driving out R11 every day? If you're smart and you're doing your, you know, if you're driving a long haul, like I drove out my 11 yesterday because I drove 600 miles. Okay, that's fine. But what if, like my load tomorrow, picks up tomorrow morning but doesn't drop until the next day in the evening? I can't run out my 11. I'll be there by the end of tomorrow because it's only 500 miles. I'll be there at the end of the day, and then I still have almost 24 hours that I can't drop the load. So you have to split that up. So you're not running out your 11 every single day. A lot of you think that that's the way it's supposed to be. That's a different video altogether, but whatever. It's not how it's supposed to be. You got a trip plan, which a lot of you don't want to do. You have to Look at your trip on a map. Decide where your stops are going to be. Decide where you're going to find shelter at the end of the night when you're done driving. Because you can't be looking with the clock counting down. And that leads me to the etiquette at the truck stops is just ridiculous. But whatever. I get it. Y'all show up. The other day, I uh, woke up in Ohio, and I was parked, you know, the way it is at the Loves, where all the trucks are backed into their spots in a row, and I woke up and there was a trailer across the trucks that we were parked in a row. Not across the way, net like making their own lane so it would be tough to pull out, like you can't even pull out because they're right in front of you. And this guy had his curtains shut and that's where he was taking his break. Not thinking 
some of us, like myself, are gonna run at zero three in the morning. Well, so I never had to do anything because when I came back from brushing my teeth, some other trucker had already started a fight with him. And you know what? He had an attitude like, how dare you wake me up? It's just hilarious and you just can't make that up. And you see a lot of it. You see a lot of it. Um, people be talking about the trucker strike, or not the strike, the trucker boycott in New York City. First of all, let's be real. That's not a real thing. It's not really going to do anything. Uh, we're still going to go into New York City. Freight is down. We have bills to pay. We, we're mostly company drivers. We're not owner operators. We can't decide that we're just not going to go into New York City. We already dread going there to begin with. You're going to get a load to New York City. You're going to go. But what's funny is when people say, I'm not going to go to New York City. And someone and everyone else dogpiles on them and says, well, give me that load. I'll do it. Send me to New York. Ha, ha, ha. You're also the same group of people who are complaining that we got to do something. We got to organize. We've got to fight against the system. And then when somebody chooses to do that, regardless if it's a silly thing, uh, you all rally against it. Because you know what? You're not, you're not going to be happy no matter what. We could all get raises and get treated like gold. You'll find a reason to complain. Another thing is a lot of you are complaining that you're sitting. Sitting for days, not getting loads. Well, it's weird because I talk to drivers constantly. Every day, people are coming up to me. Hey, good guy, Glenn. Like, like your videos. Blah, blah, blah. And we talk. And they're getting loads. And I'm getting loads. And I got a load. I dropped yesterday. I, got, I, was, I had to do my reset today. But then I already have my load scheduled for tomorrow. I have a load. So like, why is it you aren't getting loads? Did you ever think maybe it's you? And you know, I always say, the same people complaining that they're not getting enough uh, miles, they're not getting enough loads, are the same people complaining that they don't go home on the weekend or they wanna be home every weekend and that they're gonna be home every weekend. Well, guess what? If you're going to go home every weekend, they got to plan what loads they send you on around. And if there's loads that are going away from your home that week, well, if you want to go home so bad, they're not going to be able to find a way to bring you back. And if you live in, say, Tennessee, and they send you up to Illinois, they're not going to make you deadhead that truck and that burn that fuel to come back to Tennessee with no load. They're not going to do it. So... If you keep wanting to go home every single weekend, you're just not going to get miles. It's just the way it is. It's mathematics. It's simple mathematics. I don't understand why y'all don't understand that, but it seems like y'all don't. I'm not saying don't ever go home. You have to go home. You've got a family. You have to see your family. You have to see your kids. You have things like that to do, but you decided to go OTR, over the road trucking. Even if you don't want to be here, you had to know that this is the job. You're going to be away. A lot of companies do a nice fair balance three weeks out and they give you some days off at home. Some are real generous. You go out for a month and they'll let you stay home for a week. That's not a bad deal. But know that when you're not running, you're not making miles, you're not getting paid. It's just the way it is. It was the same thing when I did bridge work and I was a union, you know, and I was in the union. People think that union guys have got it made, but guess what? You know how the union works? There's no sick days. You don't get paid sick days. If you don't work, you don't get paid. That's just it. You could get hot. You could get pay for vacation. There's a fund set up for that, a vacation fund that you pay into to cover for your vacation. So you don't have a week where you lose money. But if you don't work, you don't get paid. If you don't drive miles, you don't get paid. It's just the way it is. I just don't understand what y'all can't grasp about that. But you go on consistently on all these groups, especially the Western Express group. I've never seen a bigger group of babies in my whole entire life. And it's not everyone. There's a lot of great people at Western Express. There's a lot of hard road runners out there that are making it and killing it. And, you know... Doing Western Express right, man. We are the Oakland Raiders of the trucking company. And they are hard charging through the night, getting it done, 
making miles, showing that it can be done, but it can be done. There are people out here making miles every week. There are people on that leaderboard that are making 3,500 miles as a company driver a week. Why do you think that they have loads? Why do you think they're not sitting and waiting for a load? I'll give you a hint. It's because they don't complain, they do the load, they deliver the load. They wanna make that money. They wanna stack that money. You all wanna stack money too, 100%. The problem is you don't wanna work to stack that money. You want everything to be handed to you. I see it every day. I know when I pull into the truck stop, you all know me, I run zero three in the morning and then I cut out at 1600. I get a good spot at the loves, I take my shower, and then I do it again the next day. I see y'all roll in. And you roll in at like 1800. And then some days you're there until 10 o'clock the next morning. You're sleeping 14 hours in a truck stop. And then you roll out and you deliver late. And like you, t you don't do your pre-plan. So you can't find the place. You follow co-pilot. It's just going to get you lost and take you to the wrong place tried to send me 174 miles to the wrong place. Good thing I pre-planned, checked it out on Google, got the Google satellite, figured out how to get in and out of the place that I was going. These are all things you have to do. It's all part of the job. Then pre-trip. Why do you think we get those stupid messages every day about doing your pre-trip? I watch you all at the truck stop. I harp on this in every video. I say, do your pre-trip. I've done videos on it. I say every day, do your pre-trip. Why? Y'all don't do your pre-trip. I see you in the morning. You go brush your teeth in the uh, Loves or the Pilot or the Flying J. You get in your truck, start it up, and leave. You don't even run the truck to get it up to operating temperature. Y'all know that you're supposed to do that? Probably not because a lot of you probably went to a two-week CDL school, which was like, pay us all this money, and in two weeks we'll give you a CDL. You didn't go to an actual trucking school that taught you how to actually do the pre-trip, actually why you're doing the pre-trip about the truck, about maintenance of the truck, about change, putting the oil in the truck, about coupling the truck, about checking your fifth wheel, about greasing your fifth wheel. How many of y'all greasing your fifth wheel? I bet you a lot of you aren't greasing your fifth wheel. You know how I know? Because when I grease my fifth wheel, when I'm at the truck stop, y'all look at me like I'm some sort of alien. Like, what is he doing? And then when I say something, y'all say, that's not my job. I ain't a diesel mechanic. It is indeed your job. I don't know like what, where you learned what, but your, part of your job is to maintain your vehicle. Part of your job is to pre-trip and post-trip your vehicle every day. Check your oil, check your fluids. If it breaks down, that's on you. You wanna lose more time, lose more miles, being broke down, being at the Loves, being at the Speedco, being at, God forbid, the dealership where they hold on to your truck for three days and you're in a terrible motel in the worst part of town. I mean, if you want to do that, that's cool too. You could do that, but you can't be going online and bitching about it and saying, Western Express is screwing me over. My DM is out to get me. Nobody's out to get you. Your DM, you know, he wants you to make money because he makes money if you're making money. And it's all the way that it works. Your DM wants to try to keep you busy, but if you don't want to be busy, if you show time and time again that you can't handle the responsibility of showing up on time, delivering the load, doing what you're supposed to do, he's just going to give the load to somebody who is going to do this. This is not fair outcome. This is survival of the fittest. And this is why OTR has such a high attrition rate, something like over 90%. Now, I've analyzed these numbers. A lot of people come out here strictly for experience. So... Of course, you're gonna have a high attrition rate. Are we counting on what jobs they're gonna to go to next? Allegedly, these are people who leave the industry altogether. How they calculate that, I don't know. You have a CDL license. You could probably get a job in six months or a year. Give it another try. Try to go local, something. But another thing is you have a DAC report. And all these things you do go on your DAC report and other companies are gonna look at it. So if you're consistently late delivering loads, that's on your DAC report. People are gonna know about it. If you abandon the truck, that's gonna go on a DAC report. If you're banging the trailers up, banging up the trucks, these are gonna go, this is all gonna go on DAC report. You know, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes things get unreported. Listen. Just do your job. That's all you need to do. Do your job, get up pre-trip the vehicle, check the fluids, 
you know what? These trucks do lose fluids. The oil burns off. You know, we're hauling heavy things up these mountains. That truck is running high RPMs. That's burning off oil. Check your oil at the end of the day. Or before you start your run. See if it's low. Go into the loves. Buy a thing of oil. Oh, but, you know, that's not my job. They're supposed to pay for it. Okay. Well, let's put it this way. You could put in a DVIR and wait three hours for the loves to put the oil in the truck for you. And then you're not running, you're not making hours, you're not making miles, and you're not making money. And then you complain that it's someone else's fault. Or you go into Love's, you buy the oil for a couple of bucks, you put it in the truck, it takes five minutes to do, and guess what? You're making up that money because you didn't lose the day and you made miles. You made 300, 400, 500 miles that day. You ran out your clock 11 hours. Bam, your week is saved. You made $1,200 for the week. Or you're a roadrunner and you made $1,800. It can be done. It's being done. So, freight is down. That's without a doubt. Freight is down. And it's not looking good for this next quarter. They're saying by the end of the year, freight might come back up. I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. I highly don't believe it. It's an election year. I don't think freight is picking back up until we have a new president. That's just me. Whoever the president may be. It doesn't have to be Trump. It could be Kennedy. It could be anyone. It just can't be Joe Biden. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm going to say about that. But the whole entire point of the matter is just do what you're supposed to do. And half these problems will go away. Your DM will like you if you just do what you're supposed to do and you're not constantly complaining, if you're not constantly getting yourself into some sort of trouble. And it's one thing when you get jammed up, especially when you're a new driver. You may not know what you're doing. You might be asking some silly questions. You can get lost. But you know how you can stop yourself from getting lost? Just trip plan. Check the route before you go. Learn how you're going. There's going to be detours on the route. Know the highways that are around there, the things that run parallel. Know that when you're going into Pittsburgh and it's almost 1,600, you're going to hit traffic. That's going to add three hours to your trip. Well, guess what? You can take 495 and go all the way around all of that nonsense. It adds some miles on there. You ask your DM, I'm going to save two hours, but I'm going to put on 25 miles. Roger that. 10-4. Bam. You go around the traffic, but you have to know. Half of you aren't doing that. More than half of you aren't doing that. But a lot of you are doing are texting on the phone, doing 51 miles an hour in the right lane or the middle lane. And or and then when you realize there's a truck next to you trying to go around, you put the phone down and you speed back up and then you won't let them in. And you know, you see it all the time. You're all on your phone. You got to make up your mind. Do you want to be a trucker or you don't want to be a trucker? Because it's it's a job, right? But it's also like a job. You need to do your job. And that means stay off the phone. If you get caught in a lot of these states on your phone, that's it. It's almost as bad as a DUI. Seriously. Look at some of the look at the, some of the penalties to getting caught on that phone. Big time. No good. And if it goes on your DAC, a company won't hire you. A lot of companies, even if they want to hire you, can't hire you because you have stuff on your report and the insurance company says no. It's just the way it is. So, I don't know. A lot of you are going to watch this video. You're going to say I'm a clown. You're going to say whatever. Okay, man, that's cool. I'm out here driving. I'm getting my miles every week. I don't know about you all. You all seem to be complaining about everything. And the only thing I'm complaining about is it sucks being out here alone sometimes. But otherwise, this job can be all right. So, do your pre-trip. Be safe. When you're tired, pull over. Remember that no load is more important than your family and getting home safe. Say your prayers. Love your family. Know that you don't always get what you want, but God is going to give you what you need. 
and you're gonna end up just where you need to be. And if you like this video, smash that like button. And don't forget to hit the bell so when I drop another video, you get a notification. Once again, this is Good Guy Glenn. Thanks for watching.